G'day Spurs fans, Paul Hotspur Hippie here, the only psychedelic soccer show on the internet and I've just, uh, I was just uh, had an interesting chat on uh, on old Jacob's channel. So, apparently the big story of the day is, Eve Basuma uh, filmed himself having a, a, a puff on some uh, laughing gas, nitrous oxide apparently, and uploaded it on the internet. I mean, I mean that, <laughs> that, for, that bit for me is the dumb bit, but hey, that's because I, I come from a different planet these days. And um, I've just had a quick look around uh, Twitter. I read the original report in The Sun. And there appears to be a lot of moral indignation going on here. A lot of... And uh, I think one of the reasons is, because I didn't realise this, that uh, uh, nitrous oxide was, was made, made a Class C illegal drug in the UK very recently. Not the case in Australia. You can go to shops... King's Cross if that's what you want and buy it not my thing I'm not saying do it but bloody hell man I'm seeing a lot of what about the children what about the children children look up the footballers and as far as I'm concerned football is a grown ass adult sport um, yeah football uh, children do look up the footballers but they also look up to musicians actors dancers, all sorts of other grown-ass adults in the world. And uh, it's one of those things that I, I really don't like hearing when, when people use, start using children, what about the kids, as some sort of moral argument. To me, you should be basing it on your own morals, you know? Um, and if you have got enough scaffolding and support around your kids, then this is irrelevant. And I think one of the problems we have in the Anglosphere and I'm not judging because this is our this is this is me as well, folks. This is me, you know. Um, kids from a very early age get dumped into childcare. They're spending a lot of time in front of their screens. I'm saying I did this as well, so you know I'm not pointing the finger at anyone here. This is the way the world is now. This is what people have to do to exist and and survive. So we actually are behaving as if we care less about our children. And I'm saying we do we don't we do care less, but our data ain't day-to-day day -day interactions with our kids and, and support of them is way, way less, way, way less than when I was a, a child. So I find it weird that that's how we behave. But on the other hand, it's maybe it's partly guilt or something like that. We like to, every opportunity, say, what about the children? You know, that's led to the complete sanitising of sport. You know, these people are supposed to be role models. Hey, look, some footballers, great role models for kids. Um, some are not, you know, they're, 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 they're human beings, they're, they're adult human beings, they come in all sorts of shapes and forms, none of us have not got any issues in our life, well some people like to unwind in different ways, people have got different hobbies, some are good for you, some are not so good, um, but boy oh boy, if, um, if, if, we, if we're seriously saying that the youth of today is going to start falling to bits because a footballer takes some nitrous oxide in a car, then we ain't doing a good job as parents, are we? You know, that, that ain't Eve Basuma's fault. Now, on the other you know, on the other note, like if this is gonna be something that um, either leads him to fail an athletics drugs test, which I don't think it will, or it leads to a dip in his performance, that's another thing. But his performance is a separate thing really to me as well. It's like if he's not playing well on the pitch, then he shouldn't be playing, you know. Or if he if there's if he needs help with things, then give him some help. But to say he should be kicked out of the club and all this sort of stuff just because he did something daft, you know. I mean, it was daft. I mean, I don't think it was hugely like uh, immoral or anything like that. I know people have a B in their bonnet saying, "Oh, it's against the law." Well, a couple of years ago it wasn't. So what would you have argument been there? I mean. There's a lot of people in the world, their personal moral compass is defined by what is legislated or not. And that's not the way I operate in my life. Um, you know, just because it was okay two years ago and it's not okay now, does that make it right or wrong? It has no bearing on whether you think it's right or wrong. Some people would have always thought this was wrong. That's cool. I'm not saying what you should think is right and wrong about something like this. You know, it's, it's, this is up to your own personal judgment. Um, but... You know, I, I, don't, I haven't seen any reaction from uh, 
from any uh, anyone at the club yet, or I haven't seen any reaction from footballers. And I'll tell you what, if I see any of these ex-footballers like Gary Neville or Ian Wright or Rio Ferdinand or any of these people cast moral judgment when they, they pretty much they earn their living from flogging gambling, and that is something I do have a big moral problem with because it is focused at kids. Um, you know, I know I always say that this channel isn't a democracy, it's a hot spur hypocrisy. That is the, the model of being a, a hypocrite, you know. Footballers do, not just footballers, grown ass ad adults do silly things all the time, man. And uh, I, I just don't like that um, somehow footballers are held to this imaginary perfect standard because our parenting is not as good as it used to be. That's what it comes down to me, uh, for me. I think leave him alone. Look, and all sorts. There's all sorts of speculations. Why not we just? Why don't we just take it on face value? The players had played friendly against Bayern Munich. They'd gone for a night out, had some fun. End of story. To me, that doesn't say that he's an addict. He's got an endless problem with it. He's going down some sort of deli alley route or anything like that. We don't know. We don't know. Um, but, like, the dumb thing is uploading it on Facebook, but or wherever it was, Instagram. Can you imagine if, like, 30, 40 years ago, you know, footballers had, had social media? Oh, dear, oh, dear. And it's one thing I don't like about social media. You know, it's making us change our behaviour as human beings because we're being watched. We're being watched all the time. You know, it's like, you know... George Orwell's 1984. It's not really just the government that's watching us. I mean, look, there's CCTV cameras every bloody place, isn't there? But we're watching each other. We always have to be on our best behaviour, knowing that if you, I don't know, get caught short and have a wee behind a tree somewhere, someone's going to be leaping out, videoing it. You know, it's. It, I don't know, man. I don't think it's a, it's a healthy way to exist. Uh, I think privacy is a good thing. And that's why, for me, this is a dumb thing to do because he is, he's, um, he's kind of breached his own privacy of his own accord. And maybe he was in a bit of a, an altered state or whatever, whatever when he did it. I mean, that, 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 that's, that's the daft thing. But no, nah, if, he, if, he, if he plays football well, you know, this football has been doing far worse things in the world. Now, another news, apparently Emerson Royale has... Uh, Shuffled off his Spursy coil, and finally got his move to uh, AC Milan. Hey, that's a good. That, that's good for us. Hopefully, it'd be good for him. He seems like a cool guy. He's, he's you know, he's always had the uh, the good spirits around the place, but it yeah, hasn't been. It hasn't been up to it really. It hasn't been up to it. And um, you know, it's pretty, it's pleasing to see how things have been going at Spurs recently for me. Um, you know, since the Champions League final, I believe we've really only got one player, uh, Sonny, that featured in that game now. We've had a complete turnover. Uh, I think Ben Davies is still knocking around a bit, but it's not like he's a first-team protagonist anymore. So we have had a massive turnover of personnel. Um, we're starting to see some squad depth. Um, you know, we don't, the transfer window isn't closed yet. I'm not really sweating at the moment because for me, we got the centre forward, and as I said in my video yesterday, the more I see of Dominic Solanke, I think he's a pretty cool guy, and I think he's going to do great stuff for us. One thing I watched actually was uh, I watched um, a Bournemouth uh, YouTube channel with uh, they had lots of Bournemouth fans talking about Dominic Solanke, and that, well, for a start, the Bournemouth fans were very classy about the whole thing. They're going to miss him. You know, that, that's something I always look to when uh, when we buy a player. Is the, is the, is the reaction from the, the, the fans from the club that the, they come from? Are they going to miss him? Did they like him? Did he put in a shift? Do they think they got a good deal? And, uh, yeah, Bournemouth looks like they're going to miss him. They're quite content with the deal. But they think that, we've, that Spurs have got a good deal too. So uh, it's exciting, man. So, look. Hopefully football will kick off soon. Hopefully all that nitrous oxide will have worn out of his system by then. I don't know, man. I don't know. It's a crazy old world, man. It's a crazy old world. 
Um, but until next time, peace and love, man. Peace and love. And come on, you Spurs.